Hey guys, welcome to another craft break. I am Bianca, a content creator here at Plaid. Usually we get together on Wednesdays and we do fun Mod Podge projects together, but today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about our folk art home decor chalk line. We do have a site-wide sale going on. If you guys spend over $50, you do get free shipping and you also get 20% off of your entire purchase. Fall is right around the corner and so I think that this paint line is perfect for all of your fall projects. Um, and just your regular home project. So I wanted to talk about the different colors that we have and some of our waxes. And we'll go ahead and we'll jump right into it. So we're gonna switch over to our overhead camera. And I'll start by going through some of the colors. If you guys at any point have any questions, let us know, we will try to answer them. And if you want me to revisit any of the colors that we talk about, just let me know. So let's move these up just a little bit and I'll start to pull them out one by one. And then after we go through all of our colors, I do have some painted projects that I would like to show you guys. So I'm going to start with our cashmere color and I'll hold this up a little bit. So this is almost like a beige, but it's a little bit lighter than a beige color. Almost like a mix between white and ivory. And then we'll go up a shade and we'll go to our pleasant pink. So I'll hold this up closely so you guys can kind of see the difference. And pleasant pink is one of my favorite colors. So these are two of our lightest. And then we also have our foggy. This is a gray color. We do have another color here and that is sea haze so this is a gray this is almost kind of like a gray blue I would definitely consider this to be a mix between gray and a light blue and I'll hold the bottom of the bottle up so you guys can see the difference between the two and like I said we do have some finished projects I'll go through them and I'll share with you what the colors are that we use for those projects so then we're going to go a little bit darker and we have the blue suede and I feel like this is a perfect name for this color um, without even opening the bottle. To me it definitely looks like suede. So it's almost like a mix between royal blue and navy blue. And I believe I do have a project here with me that has this color on it. I'll go ahead and I'll pull it out for you just so you guys can see it while I have this color in my hand. So this is our blue suede and we did distress this and I'll talk about how you can distress your projects in just a few minutes. So that is the blue suede and then we will get into some of our orange colors. So these two are perfect for your Halloween and your fall projects. So we have fire clay and we also have energetic orange. These are both two orange colors one is just a little bit darker than the other one our energetic orange um, again I think that this is a perfect name it is almost neon but not quite it is a little higher and more vibrant than our fired clay so the fired clay reminds me a little bit of a terracotta pot but it does still have an orange tone to it all right and then we have a few more colors here and we do have a bunch more colors than I am showing you guys today. You guys can go on platonline.com and if you search folk art home decor chalk, all of the different colors will pop up. So we have shocking pink and then we have blazing yellow. So this is a hot magenta pink. And then we have blazing yellow. I'm gonna flip these over so you can see them without the yellow. I'm sorry, not without the yellow, without the labels. And then we have another one of my favorite colors, which is the Fiddlehead Fern. I think that this is a beautiful color. This can also be used for some really fun Halloween projects. And then we have the Mellow Mocha, which is a brown. So I'll flip these over too so you can see the colors without the labels on them. 
right? And then I have one more that I want to show you guys. And this is our crackle medium. So we do have waxes that you can finish off your projects with. We have antique, we have clear. Um, here today I have the bottle to show you for our crackle. So if you wanted to do a furniture project or just a project in general, and you wanted to seal it and top it off with some of the crackle, this would crackle your project. You can kind of see the texture of it on the bottle. So that is what it will look similar to when you add this to your finished painted project. All right, so I'm gonna pull out some finished projects and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about folk art home decor chalk. So this, out of all of the paints that we have here at Platt, is probably my favorite because one, it requires little um, surface prep, little to none. Um, this is a thicker paint, so it does cover up imperfections, but I think one of the great things about this paint is that it doesn't have to be perfect. And you don't have to be a skilled painter to use it. So somebody in the comments said that they love the color of that uh, bigger board there. This one here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let me hold it up for you so you can take a little, a better look at it. So. You can use this paint on wood, you can use it on ceramic, you can use it on glass. We even have our wicker basket next to me that I want to show you guys. Um, but one of my favorite things to do with this is to distress wood furniture. Um, as much as I love pink and bright colors, my home has no color at all. And a lot of my furniture is farmhouse furniture um, that I've done on my own. And I've used this exact paint to create that look and I love distressing furniture with it so you can see that we have done that here with this trim and so if you wanted to do that at home all you would do is of course add your paint onto your surface you want to let it dry and then you can go over it with a small wood block or some sandpaper and you want to lightly scrub it across your surface to create the distressed look super easy super quick to do and again, you do not have to be an expert crafter or painter to do that. And so, these are all pieces of wood. You can use this on your trim at home the same way we've done here, if that's something you think you would like to do. And while I have this in my hand, I do want to pull out the shocking paint because that is what this color on this piece of trim is. It's very Barbie. It is very much so Barbie. <laughs> very much so. so like I said, this is a mix between hot pink, magenta, and I would also say salmon. So I really, really love this color. And then, this is another piece of trim, and let's see. This is where we have used our foggy color. And this is just like a basic gray, a lighter gray color. Bianca, we've got Susan um, asking for some clarification. She asked, uh, so do you put the clear wax on top? Yes, you will put the clear wax on top of your project and that just kind of seals it and protects it. So any wax formulas that we have here, you want to make sure you're using them on top of your project and you want to use them after your paint has dried. Gotcha. So I'm just going to hold up these two just so you guys can see them a little bit better. And then I have some other projects that I want to show you guys. I have some ceramic pieces and some glass pieces. And then really quick, I do want to touch on the different sizes that we have. Um, these that I just showed you guys are eight ounces, but we also have two ounce bottles. And then because a lot of people like to use this paint to um, paint furniture, we also have large bottles. So we have these 32 ounce bottles. So it goes from two ounce, eight ounce, and 32 ounces. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, we have another question on our YouTube stream. Um, okay. How and when uh, would you apply the antiquing on a teal board? On a teal board. Yeah, I guess they're saying because the antiquing medium is darker. 
than the wax. Oh, okay. So um, your board would still remain too. The antique wax would add a little bit of a brown tint to it. And like I said earlier, you would want to make sure that you are adding that on top of your project once your paint has dried. After the paint is dried yeah, is, yes. is the key for sure. Yep, after the paint has dried and it will add a little bit of a tint to your project. Good to know. So hopefully that answered your question. Um, I'm gonna pull out some other projects. So here we have a ceramic small vase. This could also be a candle holder as well, but we did not distress this, but I did want to show you guys that you can use this on ceramic if you would like to. It does go on well. It has great coverage. And again, like I said, this paint does not require a lot of surface prep. So if you get something from a thrift store, you don't really have to sand it a bunch. You don't have to clean it. Um, you of course want to clean your things that you're getting from thrift stores, but um, you don't have to spend hours cleaning it. This paint will cover it up and it'll still look great. So here we have glass that we have distressed. And just like I said, with the wood, once your paint has dried, you can lightly go over it with a small wood block or even a small piece of sandpaper. And you can lightly scrub across your surface to create this weathered and distressed look. And I'll give you guys a little tip, <laughs> something that I have done um, when I have spare time. I love to grab furniture from the thrift stores, especially antique looking furniture. Um, doesn't matter if it's old and ugly. I love to grab some of our white chalk paint, throw that on there. I flip it and then I sell it online. So that's just a tip. <laughs> How long would you uh, let your paint dry? Um, so this paint actually dries really quick, which is another thing that I like about it. It also depends on how big of your surface, how big of a surface you're using. So let's just say, for example, this glass jar in my hand, you probably want to let this dry for about maybe 20 minutes. Um, if you, of course, are doing a large piece of furniture, I probably would let that sit for maybe a day, maybe even two before actually using it. But the paint does dry pretty quickly, just for larger surfaces, just because it's so big, especially furniture. Yeah. And because you're going to be using it, you probably probably want to let that cure for a little bit more time. That makes sense, especially if you're adding like an antique medium or a wax yep. medium on there. Yeah. But for smaller projects like this, you really don't have to wait any more than like maybe 20 or 30 minutes. So this is um, another glass project. We love using this paint line on mason jars. And for this one, we distressed it, but we distressed it with another paint color. So we didn't scrub it with the wood block or the sanding paper. We actually went over it with a paintbrush and we just kind of feathered over it lightly with a lighter blue. So that is another way to achieve a distressed or weathered look if you don't want to use the sanding block or the wood block. So I have a piece of wood here and it's a small piece of a bigger piece of furniture. So let's just say you guys wanted to distress a dresser. This is just the drawer, but this is a great example of what your overall finished project could look like. And I do believe if I'm not mistaken, this is our blue suede color. And again, just like we did with the mason jar, instead of weathering it and distressing it with the sanding paper and the wood block, we went over it with some of our white paint. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is this basket here. So this is another great way to use the chalk paint. So if you guys find some baskets that you want to add a little bit of color to, you can put it on top of your wicker baskets. And you can do the same thing as you would with your glass or your wood. You can distress it using sandpaper or a wooden block. I'm going to hold this up a little bit closer so you guys can see what we did. So we just used some sanding paper to kind of go around and rough up the edges a little bit. So this is just another really fun and really cool way to use this paint. And then 
I did pull out one of my favorite projects. It is not Christmas yet, but <laughs> I did want to show you guys this project just to kind of get your wheels turning for the holidays. So this is a project that we created last year, and these are just pieces of wood blocks that we have painted with our folk art home decor chalk. We distressed them and then we wrapped them with ribbon. So this is a really simple and a really fun project. This is actually something that I plan on doing this year. And I will hold it up just so you guys can see it a little bit closer. Super simple and super, super fun. So this is one of my favorite projects. And then I have three more jars that I wanna show you. They are glass, but I wanted you guys to see, I'm sorry, not three, two. I just wanted you guys to see a few more of our color options. So I showed you guys the lighter gray. This is a darker gray. And this is one of our aqua blue colors. And like I said, I did not go through all of the colors with you guys today, but you guys can go to platonline.com and if you search folk art home decor chalk, all of our different colors will pop up and you'll be able to browse through them and pick out which colors you think would be great for your projects. All right, I have one more thing I wanna show you guys. Actually two more, not one more, so. This is a candle holder that we have used. This again is ceramic, it's very heavy. But this is just another color example in a way that you can use the paint. Again, I would highly suggest going thrifting and you know, giving some furniture some new life with this paint. All right. So I am going to show you guys our chalk paint paint and wax brush set so these are also on platonline.com and these just help you apply the paint a little bit better um, versus using a regular paint brush so i'll hold this up just a little bit we do have different paint brushes that are also intended um, to use with this paint but this one comes with two so you have your paint brush and you have your wax brush so this one here is your wax brush, and this one here is for your paint. And these just make it a little bit easier to apply this type of paint to your surfaces. All right, so that is our Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint. If you guys have any questions before we get out of here, let us know, we will try to get those answered. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Like I said, this is one of my favorite paints and I would love to see what you guys come up with at home. Do you want to if talk about the sale? Oh yeah, the sale, <laughs> the most exciting part. So um, if you guys cannot choose between a color, you can get a couple. So if you spend more than $50, you do get free shipping and you also get 20% off of your entire order. So you guys can go to plaidonline.com. You can fill your cart up with all of these colors. Again, these bottles do come in two ounce, eight ounce, and 32 ounce for larger projects. And you can also grab your paintbrush set. Yeah, we also have like pre-made kits for yeah. home decor chalk that yeah. come in a bunch of different themes and colors. Yeah. Uh, we've got the multiple sizes. We've got the brushes like Bianca yeah. talked about. And we've got tons of um, tips and tricks on our YouTube and Facebook uh, that show distressing uh, in multiple different ways, sanding, uh, how to use the yeah. antiquing and wax mediums. So check all that out if you're interested. Yeah, and I would also suggest maybe getting um, two or three of the different wax finishes. Um, that way you can play with the antique, you can play with the clear, and you can also play, play around with the crackle. Um, and you can see which one you like better, or if you like them all, you can create multiple projects that you can hold on to. Sounds good. Yeah, so if you guys did not have any questions, we will see you guys again next week at the same time. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and make sure you use hashtag plaidcraft so that we can see all of the projects that you make at home with your chalk paint. See you guys next week.